Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. So let's address the elephant in the room first. Yes, I cut my hair. Um, it's just it just got too thin on the top. So that's the only reason. It's not because I want to look like OA Labs. So um, yeah. Um, now today's topic is uh, speak easy. Um, I came across a bunch of current mode drivers uh, during my work lately, which were packed. And uh, SpeakEasy was, in that case, a very handy tool. So let me showcase to you how to install and how to use it. So the tool that I mentioned is called SpeakEasy. It's from Mendiant. So that's where you get it from that's the github page so all you have to do is uh, download it with code download um, archive and then extract the archive and you follow exactly these installation options now this is python based so you need python 3 um, so install python 3 first if you haven't already and then simply um, um, execute those two and speak easy is install onto your um, system so it's uh, not that um, complicated. Now, you might be tempted to just type pip install speakeasy. I think there's another package called speakeasy, which is not this one. So um, this will not work. Um, I tried this on Linux and there was something else. So um, with that said, uh, what is speakeasy actually? Speakeasy is an emulator. So it will not execute your sample. Uh, instead, it will emulate the sample. It will create um, API traces for you and it can create memory dumps for you. I already created some memory dumps beforehand because um, for the kernel mode samples that I want to show you, it takes a little bit of time um, and I did not want to waste too much time on that. So uh, during the video. So how do you use it? Well, after installing it, you have uh, speakeasy.exe in your path. And um, if you don't enter anything, you, you see all of the options. The options are also explained on the website on GitHub. So, um, but the most important one is minus T for target. So that's how you specify the sample that you are using. So for instance, the current driver. Um, now, the um, kernel mode stuff takes a little bit longer than the user mode samples. Um, and for these, I'm gonna break here. Uh, for these, you to get valuable memory dumps for these, you have to set um, the um, time out a little bit higher, maybe 120, so it's like two minutes. Um, and then you gotta set, well 300 worked for me, but I, I think 120 might work as well. And then you will set with minus D the memdump um, archive name. So, and then maybe specify what it is for. So, um, that's how you execute this one. Now I'm gonna do it like this. Now, if I execute this, it takes far too long. So I'm not gonna do it for this one, um, but maybe showcase it instead for the user mode sampler. Um, so And now it's already finished. Um, yeah, the user mode samples uh, go by pretty quickly. Uh, you just need to know um, on just using this one, it will not work immediately. It will not work on .NET. It will not work on VB5, VB6, um, because these need additional libraries, which it doesn't ship with. So uh, those will not work, but some samples will work very well. And for this sample, what I find quite useful here is you get all of the um, dynamically resolved imports. So it has some imports that it, it's a packed file and it 
resolve some imports when executed and those are the ones that, that you get so you already know okay these are probably also the apis it's been using later um very very useful and here are some more um and you can kind of see um, sometimes also paths when if it copies itself somewhere you see more paths um, and um, the mem dump of course is um, a useful one it's now um, been put here so let's take a look at the mem dump actually so I got these um, during my daily work as a member and has got these as tickets um, kind of mode drivers and now my task as a Mariner is, is usually just to say, to give it a verdict, say it's Mavir, it's clean, yeah. Um, and for these, I got um, the same task and the issue is they are packed. So that's already quite unusual that drivers are packed. Um, now let's check it, is it really packed, yeah. Um, I'm creating the visualization for this one. Um, this is a kind of a driver PNG, and we want this for kind of driver. So we create the visualization. It also tells us here um, we have some weird section names dot vmp0 and dot vmp1 um, you might want to know or see it from from the output of portex that this is typical for vm protect um, detected easy will tell you the same and um, if you check the visualization and also just the entropy um, could tell you the same because like this far is packed so um, you you have very high entropy area here, which matches this um, packed um, entropy. And yeah, um, fractionated imports, you know, they are spread all over here. This is typical for VM pack, uh, VM protect, sorry. So there's that. Um, and I had the issue, I could not just, um, I tried installing this with sc.exe on to a Windows 10 VM and then I realized it doesn't work for Windows 10 so you need to find out which system does the kernel driver work with in order to execute it dynamically and this um, turned out to be a bit time intensive I'm always trying to get things done faster and takes shortcuts if I have to analyze lots of files every day so um, that's why I came across speakeasy and tried it so here, when we actually check the mem dump of this one, um, here, um, that's, that's the output from Speakeasy. I, I set the timeout of 300 seconds. Um, and there is one um, memory file, mem dump file that is quite big. Um, that's usually the interesting one. So you're gonna look at that first and we are gonna check this with strings.exe. Let's see. So, gonna put that into kernel mem dump strings. Um, and then I'm gonna open a notepad because I increase the size a bit so you see it better. So uh, this is still a lot of stuff. We have like tools to script, strip away the more uninteresting strings. But um, now this is a, if you don't have that, you're gonna scroll a little bit more. <laughs> And if you scroll down a little bit, you get to this area here. So that has some readable strings that you do not see in the file um, on disk. So, and that's interesting because these are like typical strings for some kind of uh, game cheat tool. 
So it says like trigger board, auto flash, auto ice block, auto not back. Uh, and down below you see stuff like um, names from Overwatch characters. So this is uh, quite likely a game cheat tool. And at this point, at least in my line of work, we stop analyzing because those are not um, tools we spend more time to check if it's map. It's in a graver category, so they generally get no more analysis time. Um, that's um, then just graver tool, and graver is often handled as don't care. Um, so if you have cheats, illegal software, or anything of that sort, most of the time analysts will not um, take care to. I neither take care to fix false positives nor take care to check if there's actual malware behind it. Um, so with the second one, that's uh, kind of similar um, to the first. And um, let's also check the strings from this one. So And this is the kind of driver to memdam strings. Um, now, if I assume, now here's this thing, these are also a lot, a lot of strings. I know it's a kernel driver, and most of the time, if drivers have to install themselves, they use some uh, folder named device to get there uh, for, for the installation. So I'm searching for device, and that's actually how I get to um, this area here. And what um, made me now able to say the verdict for this one is I what if I had I've analyzed files before I create Yara rules for them and I create specifically create Yara rules that do not that are not tied to work to P on PE file formats so I create them in a way that they work for memory dumps as well and in that case the code that I created the rule for matched on this because I had a file like this before that was not packed and um, then I found out, okay, it's a, it's a rootkit that I checked before. And yeah, these are also the strings. Now, if you don't have, if you haven't seen this before, um, I would recommend, unless it's essential that you analyze specifically this sample, um, just search for those strings uh, and s look look at virus total, for instance, if you find files that are already unpacked and that have um, all of those strings here. So you can um, find a non-packed version of this file already. That's certainly easier than trying to unpack this one. Um, yeah. So this is malware. Um, and at this point I could already stop instead of, you know, setting up everything with a new Windows version and hoping that it works. Um, Yeah, and for the um, user mode um, sample, what there also m was a match on one of my younger rules. Now the rule looked something like that. Um, I'm gonna write it real quick. It was something like um, this program, that's a DOS sub message. You say, you say this one was exhort with some key that's between those values. Um, so you exclude a non-XOR DOS apps me message. Um, if, if the key would was zero, it would just not be um, encrypted. So, and the condition is just um, something like this. So you save this as a Yara rule. 
your signature. No, I don't want to save it in here, but on the desktop. So save it. Now, this was one of my, I have a huge Yara rule set with similar um, rules where, you where I just find interesting things and files because it also saves time. Um, and now the memdam, that's the one we just created, right? Yeah, here it is. That's the memdump. And also here you have another um, file that the, again, the most interesting file is the, the largest one in this case, which is this. So let's put it here. And we gonna run Java on that with all of my roots. Let's pretend these are all of my roots. Yeah. Um, they... okay. Crap. <laughs> Um, and you get a match on PE exhort uh, on this mem dump. So um, now you want to know where this is. You put minus s, and you see okay, it's it's at this location. Uh, so you can just open this file in the hex editor. Say uh, go to this location. And that's the XOR this program. So we we may assume that like if you cut out this part and try to um, decode it with um, some some XOR tool, um, you will get a part of executable out of it that is packed inside this file. And you will also realize just so um, you see this signature does not work on the user mode sample. So it actually unpacked something here in memory, um, the emulator. And so for this sample, it's very useful. Uh, for others, it might not work. So it really depends. Um, but I think it's worth trying. It's better than having to set up everything. And uh, yeah. So that's it already for today. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.